won't fix your life in five easy steps and the law of the land of the government but it's all Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship here at Zion. A special welcome to those tuning in online in our virtual sanctuary. And a very special welcome to our three-year-olds and our fourth graders. Because today we have a milestone for them where they will receive their Bible. Throughout Zion, our ministry teams partner with children and with youth and with their families to celebrate important moments in their faith journey. And so today... We'll celebrate those kids who receive a Spark Story Bible or a very big, a little bit heavier chapter Bible. Uh, so today there's no children's sermon per se. We'll have this milestone uh, ministry moment at the beginning. And then once that is done, all the kids will be invited out to Sunday school. As we turn in together to hear Jesus' words of greatness, may this time today spark a little bit of curiosity and spark a little bit of assurance in you that you are beloved and you can be present here. And so with that, I invite you to stand as you're able. The peace of Christ be with you always. Thank you. I invite you to share a sign of peace with one another.
and I invite you to be seated. Well, thank you, Ring Forth, for welcoming our kids in. If you see one of your kids up here, I invite you, if you're a, fourth, a parent of a fourth grader, to come on up as we prepare to bless these Bibles and bless these kids. Good morning, everybody. It's so wonderful to see everybody here this Sunday. Thank you for coming on up and for being up here for this very special milestone moment. We'll wait till everybody gets up here. Look at this wonderful group of people. This is absolutely wonderful. It's a great place. Good. Super. Thank you. Well, if you don't know, many of you do know, here at Zion, we have um, started a new milestone ministry program where we are going to partner with Zion's youth ministry as well, and we're going to assure that every child at Zion, children and youth, will be celebrated each and every year uh, for a different faith life milestone happening. So thank you for being here for this very special moment. Each milestone includes an event that precedes the Sunday worship um, service celebration. So this past Wednesday, the children and family team and Pastor Trevor gathered with parents and kids and we had just a phenomenal time learning together about the books of the bible hearing stories from god's word today our younger children will be receiving their spark story bible and our elementary kids will be receiving their spark chapter bible it's a very special step in their faith journey so kids when you were baptized we just had a bit two baptisms at the 830. When you were baptized, your parents brought you to that font right there, or maybe another one, I don't know, and they made promises to nurture you in faith and in life and to place in your very tiny hands at the moment the Holy Scriptures, to place in your hands the Bible. And so today they're fulfilling pieces of that promise, but also the whole congregation made that promise as well. And so not only your parents will nurture you and be with you, but so will this whole congregation to make sure that you have this resource of a Bible to read and to know and to be able to read together. And so as we start to pass these out, I invite uh, parents, if you want to put a hand on the Bible, on your kid's head, shoulder, knees or toes, I really, any of those work. Um, if, yeah, it's pretty heavy, you guys. If you want to hold it, and we'll prepare. And congregation, as they place a hand, you know, head, shoulders, knees, or toes, or on the Bible, I invite you to extend a hand out as well as we together bless these kids and bless these Bibles. Right, does everybody have one? And let us pray together. Word of God, you are present as we read these stories that you have passed down. May your word come alive for those receiving a Bible today. Bless, Bless these, these Bibles. Bibles. <laughs> word of God, 
Parents are the main faith providers for these children. Bless them to be intentional about praying and reading the Bible together to nurture faith at home as well as at church. Bless these, these parents. parents. So, word of God, Jesus says, let the little ones come to me. May you entrust these kids with the gifts of imagination, questions, and thoughts as they read your word and come to know you more. Bless, Bless these, these kids. kids. Word of God, your word feeds and nurtures us all. May we approach your word together as one beloved community that our faith may build upon your love Trust the goodness of your grace and live as your children now and forever. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Let's give him a round of applause. Yay. Okay, guys. Awesome. As we begin to make our way to Sunday school, you can leave those wonderful but heavy books of the Bibles <laughs> with your parents, if you'd like, as we make our way slowly on off. Perfect. And preschool, you'll make your way out that way if you're in the pews. Otherwise, the rest of you can follow Miss Christie right so down the center here. Nice work. <laughs> together. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin and come to God for healing. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have honored you In our desire to be first, we make distinctions among ourselves. We place the needs of the poor and the suffering in last. In your great mercy, forgive us our sins, draw near to us with grace in time of need, and turn us to follow in the way of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God promises to forgive our iniquity and to remember our sin no more. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, the source of eternal healing, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Amen. And please be seated as we sing together.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And shall we pray? Gracious God, in you we have our life and our joy. Transform us by your power to be people ready to see the needs of others. Empower us by your Holy Spirit to make our faith active in love. This we pray through Jesus Christ, who is our true north. Amen. Please read with me responsively. Save me, O God, by your name. In your might, defend my cause. Hear my prayer, O God. Give ear to the words of my mouth. For strangers have risen up against me, and the ruthless have sought my life, those who have no regard for God. Behold, God is my helper. It is the Lord who sustains my life. Render evil to those who spy on me. In your faithfulness, destroy them. I will offer you a free will sacrifice and praise your name, O Lord, for it was good. For you have rescued me from every trouble, and my eye looks down on my enemies. Our reading today is from the book of James. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness and born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, and devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot attain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to please stand as you are able. this gospel acclamation, so I invite you to read this responsively. Listen now for the gospel. Hallelujah. It is God's word that changes us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come, Holy Spirit, root in us God's living word, that we may show the faithfulness of Christ our Lord. And so the holy gospel, according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus and the disciples went on and passed through Galilee. He didn't want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. 
Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, what were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another, who was the greatest? He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. He took a little child whom he placed among them, taking the child in his arms, he said to them, whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated. I remember uh, receiving my very own chapter Bible back in elementary school. This one you can tell from the design is a little dated now. And despite my grandfather being a pastor, despite my parents lovingly taking me to church, and despite my cherished Sunday school teachers, I remember getting this thing and recall thinking, okay, now what the heck do I do with this? It doesn't exactly read all that well. Even though it's made for kids, it can be hard to read, let alone for us adults. And often our experience with the Bible, with this book, can echo the disciples' reaction to Jesus' words. They did not understand what he was saying, and they were afraid to ask him. And this lack of understanding on their part, this lack of curiosity, seeps out so vividly in their following conversation. Jesus explains how the Messiah, the promised saver of the world, would be confoundingly made real in death and in resurrection. The greatest of all, the Son of Man, will fall into human hands and be killed, and then will be raised from the dead three days later to show that God's power is made great in the least of all, in the places we would least expect. But because this lesson goes in one ear and out the other, they bicker and they argue about who is the greatest. Who is Jesus' favorite? Who's going to sit at Jesus' right hand? So when Jesus storms into Rome, beats up the emperor, and builds a new empire, you know, just like he said he wasn't going to do, who will rank above who in this new imperial army of God? And so when James asks in our second reading for today, who is wise and understanding among you, we can say with certainty, well, definitely not the disciples, not wise and not really the most understanding. And as is often the case, when we go to judge the disciples in all of their floundering and fear and fighting, it's not too long before we look at our own fears, our own arguing with fellow disciples about some matter that doesn't matter, our own frameworks of the world that lead us to think war, battle, fighting with one another, this is greatness. From Alexander the Great to the great militaries of today. James writes about this arguing and warring as the conventional wisdom, as the prevailing framework of the world. It's these words that help shape our confession and forgiveness we spoke earlier today. These conflicts and disputes among you where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and don't have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and can't obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. This is what our Bibles are for, though. To shift our frameworks of greatness into something centered in Jesus, the Word of God. Not in military might, nor arguing, nor forcefulness, nor fighting. When we engage in these ancient stories made real in Jesus' words, we can be refreshed with a new way of thinking. As James describes it, the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Look at these words that describe this wisdom available in our text. Pure, peaceful, gentle, mercy, good, righteous, peace, 
peace, peace. This is what can surround our worldview. That when we take in the wisdom from our Bibles, we can then adopt this new way of being, this new way of thinking, and be led in our reading and in our whole lives with curiosity. One author describes this scene where the disciples did not understand what Jesus was saying and were afraid to ask him as a tragedy at the lack of curiosity. It is a tragedy when we don't ask, when we aren't curious about the wisdom, the gentle mercy, the stories that Jesus and the entire Bible puts forth for us. And so it's no coincidence that Jesus then picks up a child, literally lifts it up to the, their eye level to be on their same level and says, here, here's your greatness. It's in this curious creature that we call children, and in welcoming them, though you might think that they're in the way, or they're a nuisance, or they need to be quietly off to the corner, they contain the kingdom of God. They are truly great. And this is the topsy-turvy ways of God, this upheaval of what we considered great, turning out to be the least, and what, or maybe who, we once assumed as the least, actually hold such elevated status as divine greatness. So when you open your Bible, whether it's this lovely one you got when you were in fourth grade or it's on the app on your phone, therein lies an opportunity not to argue, not to confirm what we think we already know or to be made feel like we're the greatest, nor to be shamed into silence. When we read our Bibles, it is an opportunity to be opened up to this version of greatness, this vision of greatness, to be led by curiosity to wonder and to imagine and then to practice this love of Jesus that says, whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. So I know it's probably pretty predictable for your pastor to say, hey, I hope you read your Bible, right? Thank you, Trevor. I was really wondering if he would say that. But even more than that, even more than just hoping you open up the app every day or you read a verse every now and then. It is my hope that our time together on Sundays reading this book together wraps your framework of the world in love. It's my hope that you'd be curious, that you'd wonder about these stories, but even more so you would wonder about people instead of assuming that they have some lesser or some greater status, that you would discuss with one another instead of interpreting alone that you would use your God-given imagination to imagine how the world can be more at peace. Because grounded in gentle mercy, in peace, grounded in love, we can ask questions. We don't have to be silent. We can be curious and we can respond to these stories with our whole lives by welcoming the supposed least among us. In just a second, we'll sing this old tune of Jesus Loves Me with a little bit of a jazzy intro. I kind of like it, though. And these words to Jesus Loves Me, they're, they're pretty simple, right? But in them holds this great, this greatness within them. And so may you take those great words and all that this book has to teach you that you may share this love of Jesus with the whole world. Amen. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me.
so Little ones to him belong They are weak but he is strong Yes, Jesus loves me Yes, Jesus loves me Yes, Jesus loves me This I know Yes, Jesus loves me Yes, Jesus loves me Yes, Jesus loves me For the Bible tells me so Na 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 Jesus loves me, he who died, heaven's gates to open wide. He who wash away my sins, let his little child come in. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes. Jesus loves me, yes. Jesus loves me, this I know. ushers down as we receive this morning's offering. It is God's abundance that wraps around us that makes it so that we can sing, Jesus loves me, and then we can proclaim to others, Jesus loves you. And in your giving and your generosity, you help make that possible here at Zion. And so a word of thanks to all of you for your gifts and your generosity. And I invite you now to sit back and relax and hear our wonderful youth and family worship team. I'm reaching now, yet the sun keeps on setting. Painting me gold, but bringing on. As I look to the sky, I can feel the tears start swelling, and I cry, help me, Lord, what am I to do? I gotta have faith, faith in the Lord, that the sun will rise tomorrow, and I'll be stronger than before. I gotta have faith. Trying times will help me and I can reap my reward. I look around and begin to count my blessings. Oh, and one by one, and I see what God has done. My heart is whole and I don't need the cave on guessing. I am a child of God, even after all is said. Sun will rise tomorrow, and I'll be stronger than before. I got 
my Savior's walking with me. By my side and my heart and in my mind. He's the light of my life that I need to survive. And I'm all that I am because of Him. So I'm going to have faith. Faith in the Lord. Oh, let the sun rise tomorrow. And I'll be strong. Blessed are you, O God, source of every gift of your creation. By these gifts that we have given and with our lives, help us to serve one another and all in need. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Together we confess our common Christian faith. I invite you to please stand as you are able. And we confess together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the conscious Pilate, who was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. together. And as we pray together, we are drawn by the gift of the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit. So we pray with confidence for the church, for God's good creation, and for all who are in need. Each prayer petition ends with, hear us, O God, if you would please pray, your mercy is great. Gracious Lord, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for your amazing abundance that encompasses our entire lives. We give you thanks for two little ones this morning who were baptized, Royce and Knox. We give you thanks for the fourth graders and the three-year-olds as they have been get blessed with their holy scriptures this day and their families have remembered their baptismal promises. Gather us all up into the joy of studying your word, of having curiosity in it. Lord, hear us, O oh God. And gracious Heavenly Father, as we sing boldly, Jesus loves me, help us to also proclaim boldly that Jesus loves others so that in our proclaiming, we may bring about your joy, your grace, and your peace into this world. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Gracious Heavenly Father, as we look at the world and we see how true it is that our disagreements and our quarrels and the emptiness of our own hearts can cause deep hurt. Can we listen to your Son who has told us to love, to love graciously and to love boldly? And so, Heavenly Father, we pray boldly for peace among all people in this world. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Healing God, 
You desire goodness and health and well-being for all of your people. So bind us together to care for one another. We especially pray for those on our hearts and our minds that we know are dealing with long-term illness, with a new diagnosis, or who are recovering from surgery. And we name those people now in our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. We entrust these and all of our prayers to you, O oh Holy God, in the name of your beloved child, Jesus Christ, who is our Savior. Amen. And we pray together as our Lord teaches us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. some great opportunities coming up for you to engage in different parts of this community. First is just a giant thank you. On that table back there, there's some 20 diapers 
that have been a part of our diaper drive that you all have been leaving throughout these past couple weeks. And so just know that, as many of you do, raising kids is hard enough having to afford for the essentials of diapers, you know, makes it even harder. And so because of your generosity and all that you've given, families not only in our Buffalo area community, but also in North Minneapolis with our partner Redeemer Lutheran Church, will be receiving some of that abundance. And so thank you for all the ways that you've helped serve this community as well as others. Now, as it turns a little bit into the colder months, it's a little chillier outside. I turned my AC off last night. It was very cold. I know you were all wondering. But today is the first official day of fall, fun fact. And so we are now turning towards our coat drive. So every week, as many of you already know, there is a lovely spot right out there in the front, uh, through the front doors where you can drop off Wednesday throughout the day, old clothes, maybe new clothes, but definitely clothes that you or maybe your parents don't need anymore. Um, and so that is still an option for you to give, but starting next week on the 29th, um, you can drop off there. Throughout the week, you can drop off where that table will be. You can drop off outside of the community center or outside of Cub starting the 29th. New and used coats for us to distribute next month through the blessing closet. So I really invite you to, you know, look through that closet, see what maybe feels a little tight, maybe what your kids don't need anymore, or again, what your parents don't need anymore. Clear out that house. Um, and please help us to serve this greater community. And then lastly, this coming Wednesday is our next installment of the drive through Coffee and Blessing at Zion. It's growing. We got to see so many of you last time, but between 7 and 8.30 on Wednesday, please drive on through just this front part of the of the building and you'll receive coffee, a little treat, and then a blessing or a prayer to start your work day or your school day, or your day taking care of kids or your grandkids, whatever your day has in store. Maybe you're doing nothing. You can still come and get a blessing or a prayer to start your day, hopefully on a little bit of a better note. And so with all of those things before us, I also want to just shout out that we will have a reception in our fellowship hall for you to get coffee and donuts as usual, but also there's cookies and there is a Bible available on every table, those Bibles that we hand out to the kids. So feel free to flip through it to see what's there, to get a cookie, a donut, and to sit and just simply talk with one another. And so with that and everything before us, I invite you to stand as you're able for our sending benediction. So the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. With all we are, and with all we do, we will trust in Christ, live for Christ, and serve with Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Go forth now in peace, for you are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God.
Look up, 